The Archuria Mini Lab Mark II is one of my top three recommended mini MIDI controllers that I usually can recommend to people that are really looking for a solid build quality, great key quality, as well as some Ableton Live support. But it hasn't always been perfect, and Arturia actually just released a new firmware update for the Mini Lab Mark II that addresses some of the main issues that folks had with it. So I've updated my Mini Lab, and today we're going to go over some of the updated features of the Mini Lab Mark II. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Tetro, your electronic music mentor. Before we get too deep in the video, I just want to mention that about 79 to 80% of my watch time here on YouTube comes from folks that are not subscribed to my channel. And subscribing to my channel actually helps me out a lot. It helps out the YouTube algorithm to recommend my videos more. And if you are part of that, you know, 79 to 80%, I would really appreciate it if you just took a moment and clicked the subscribe button down below, especially if you like videos about MIDI controllers like the Mini Lab Mark II or any other popular MIDI controllers as you can see from behind me. I've got beat making videos so you can see the controllers in action and generally when there's a new controller coming out, I either get it early or I'm one of the first to get my hands on it so I can actually show you what it's all about. So right now, before we get into the video, take a moment, click the subscribe button. And if you stumble across something you like in this video, give it a thumbs up. And then when the video is over, comment and let me know if you have any questions or you want to point something out. But for now, let's get into the firmware update for the Arturia Mini Lab Mark II. All right, so there are four major updates that Arturia made to the Mini Lab Mark II. Improved control accuracy, more accurate and sensitive subtle tweaks. So one of the major, major problems with the Arturia Mini Lab Mark II pre this update was if you used any plugins that were non Arturia plugins, basically using these knobs, these endless encoders actually, which most of the other MIDI controllers over here don't have, they would move very, very slow. So you would have to repeatedly turn the knob to get the effect that you wanted. But with this new firmware update, they've hopefully fixed that. Second one is enhanced pitch bend. So apparently they've made some improvements to the pitch bend touch strip, which I never really had a problem with before. So I'm curious to see. Configurable pad backlighting, meaning we can have control over the colors of our pads. And also when pads are not in use, they will still be illuminated. I like that. I like when a controller's on, it's lighting up. It looks dope. I'm a fan. And apparently lots of people complained about the octave button, which used to flash when you pressed it. It used to just constantly blink, but apparently now, no more, it's going to just be solid. And I've actually already updated my Arturia Mini Lab Mark II, so let's plug it in and get this started. All right, so right away, what do we see here but our illuminated pads? So the pads are not in use, and we're on page one of the pad modes, which you hold shift and you can select one through eight. Page one is controlling Analog Lab, which is Arturia's suite of plugins and kind of plugin hub. So like I said, that's nice. That's the first major improvement. But what I actually did in Arturia's MIDI control center was if we hold shift and go to the second page, I went ahead and made a custom page with custom colors. So you can actually set the pads to your own custom colors like I did here. You know, it's really useful for performance or if you have a certain production workflow that you like, you know, you could assign certain colors to certain samples or to certain sounds, etc. So it's nice to have that capability now. now. I've got a live set loaded up here. So let's test out the pitch bend improvements. Like I said before, I never really had an issue with the pitch bend at all. It sounds smooth to me, but let's go ahead and make a MIDI clip and let's look at how the tracking is of the MIDI. Go to MIDI control. Let's just record a quick clip and see what the pitch bend automation looks like. Let's look at the envelope. And that looks pretty smooth to me. Now I can't really compare it because I don't know how it was before, but apparently they have made improvements. And to me, these look like pretty smooth lines, which I guess is important and what they were aiming for. I mean, even if we zoom in, that's pretty good tracking to me, folks. And you know, a lot of people don't like touch strips. They prefer pitch and mod wheels, but I actually like touch strips because if I just rest my finger here, I can get a much more natural bend sound, in my opinion, than a wheel that kind of spins. Eh, just my preference. And of course, before we get to the most important update, which I think is the knobs, let's just verify that yes, when I push octave up, 
the light is solid. It no longer blinks. When I push it again, still solid. Now, one thing I would have preferred is sure have it solid for the first time you hit it. But then the second time you hit it, it should blink. So I know that I'm two octaves up, not just one octave up. Same for octave down. It should blink, in my opinion, at least. I don't mind the blinking, but apparently a lot of people complained. But this last update, I do not blame people speaking out and being picky about because even though this is one of my most recommended MIDI controllers, this is the biggest drawback was the knob functionality. Um, like I said before, in Analog Lab, using Arturia plugins, the knobs worked great. They worked perfectly. So, you know, just to kind of demonstrate that, I bring up the Mellotron. And if we turn one of these knobs, the tone knob, that knob is spinning nice and smoothly. But if I switch over to the Ableton Live mode on page eight, we will see, let's control my basic audio processing rack and let's dial in some reverb. Now, previously I would have had to spin and spin and spin this knob to get it to work properly. But as we can see now, nice and smooth knob function that is huge that's just fantastic i'm so glad that they were able to fix that and so long after the mini lab has come out it would have been nicer to have that fixed obviously much earlier but i'm sure archeria had lots of stuff to work on now instead of this just being a boring old like go over the features video like it has been up until now let's actually see this in action and make a beat with some Arturia plugins and the Arturia Mini Lab Mark II. This video is not sponsored or anything. I just think it's nice to have a showcase of some of these sounds because a lot of them are really, really good. So I'm going to use all Arturia plugins today for the instrument sounds at least. First one being the Mellotron 5, which you already have open. And let's just try to record a quick musical idea. I've already got a hi hat loop loaded. I obviously pre made this live set. To come up with some musical ideas. Let's bring the octave down. Let's record. That was messy. I'm going to grab just the second half of that and that'll be kind of the basis of our tune here. There we go. Alright, next plugin I want to go ahead and use is the Stage 73V. Just like this keyboard plugin, almost like a Rhodes, using the Jazz Time preset. Just try to use this as a bass line. Let's clean up a little bit of my messiness there. Exit out. Go ahead and quantize. Let's keep these legato. If we press the legato button, let's go ahead and stretch these notes out. I think it's okay. I'm going to leave a little of the messiness in there. All right. Shall we add some drums? Let's start with this drum rack here. So I'm going to go ahead and hold shift and go back into, you know, page one. Nice. Let's try to add a top loop here. Let's 
Clean it up with quant size. I don't think it clashes with the hi-hats too much, but let's go ahead and duplicate that loop and add a back beat. Ooh, that was just messy. Let's try again. All right, clean. I'm liking that. One thing I wish they could add to this with maybe a future firmware update, it's Ableton specific, but I would love to have, see how these two pads have no samples on them. Look at drum rack, no samples. I wish those could not be illuminated. I wish there was a drum rack page that maybe functioned like that. Um, push, launch pads, they, they have that, but maybe it takes a little something extra. Another thing I wish for is when I'm in Ableton mode, so now let's select the proper scene. I can see my clips, they're here. So green clips are playing clips, yellow clips are non-playing clips. I wish the track that was armed, like let's arm this Pigments track. Pigments, one of my favorite, favorite Arteria plugins. I wish that this would kind of give me a faint red glow so I know that that track is armed and ready for recording. But let's go ahead and try to add a layer on top of this. Let's go with it. Actually, no, I don't like the ascending. Let's play descending. Much better, blends a lot better. So again, that's Pigments, one of my favorite uh, plugins from Archeria. That preset is called City Edge. Not doing much to the presets here. Um, that's just kind of how I roll. Find a preset and barely, barely touch it. I have access to so many sounds that if there's a sound in my head, I can likely find a preset that sounds like it. This CMIV. This beautiful choir sound. Maybe it's got too much reverb on it. This uh, knob functionality coming in clutch here. I actually like a lot of reverb. I guess just with the dry wet down it's better. Yeah, it's played up there. fan last touch i threw a splice sample in here Ooh. what was i thinking yeah lower i guess let's try it out
So what do you all think? Let me know. I think that beats all right. All archery sounds, aside from the drum samples, obviously. And you know, the effects, I mean, the updates here on the Archery Mini Lab Mark II are, are just a great quality of life update. Uh, especially since this is one of my top recommended MIDI keyboards. It's a lot easier to recommend it now that these knobs have been fixed. That's always been a caveat in recommending the Archeria Mini Lab Mark II, but really grateful that Archeria went ahead and updated it, and so long after its release, too. It's been out a while, and they're still supporting it, so that says something about Archeria as a company. So if you do like the beat that we just made, maybe we can arrange it on a future live stream. Let me know in a comment down below, and we can turn it into something real. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. I want to try to move that number. You know, we've got 79, 80% watch time from non-subscribed. If you made it this far, you must have enjoyed it. Become a subscriber for more live electronic music performances, tutorials, and content to make you a more productive producer. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up on your way out and comment, of course, with any questions. This has been Tatro, your electronic music mentor. Have a good one. Thank you.